AI agents, what the hell are they? Basically, you can think about them as an autonomous worker who will complete one specific task for you. And what's interesting about agents is that what happens when you like link a whole bunch of them together, you know, you can do a lot of interesting things. Um, we're gonna take the absolute smallest example possible today just to demonstrate what's possible, but um, in a future video, perhaps, future stream, I'll be building something a little bit more complex. So basically, so how do we make use of this for Twitter, for social media? Let's first do a quick manual demonstration, and then I'll show you how we can uh, take our, man our understanding of the manual process and put an agent in place to replace our workflow. So if I'm in Twitter, right, and this is just my Twitter feed, it's mostly a lot of like programming stuff, AI news stuff. There's some memes on here. There's a there's a large mix of of content. So let me just first define like what my objective is. I want to find other people who are perhaps building AI products. Now, this is my objective. Your objective can look entirely different, but the point is like I want to connect with other people building AI-based products because I think it's interesting. It's a source of inspiration for me. And I don't want to have to just like sit through, sift through. I don't want to have to sift through this and like, you know, manually go to people's profiles and be like, okay, well, like this guy doesn't look like he's doing it. So I'm not going to follow him. All right, next. Like, uh, it's, you know, he's a co-founder of Altera AI. Like, I think this is pretty good. So I, I'd give him a follow. And so what an, what an agent can do really well in this situation is remove me from the process as long as I can properly define what I'm, like how I'm searching for people. So for example, like right now off the bat, I'm noticing that the way that I am conducting my research is I will open a profile up, I'll read their bio, and then I'll make a decision off of their bio. So how do we take that information and make the classification without having to manually do so. So like, obviously, the first thing we have to do is figure out what do I have to tell ChatGPT or OpenAI or whatever, or Anthropic? What do I have to do to figure out, to, to prompt the large language model to figure out if this person is within my you know ideal customer profile or not? So I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, prototyping here and I'll say I'm looking for people who can this who are building AI powered products uh, websites people who are building AI powered websites does this person or does this bio fit my description okay so this is our prompt I'm just going to give this a little copy and then we are gonna go into ChatGPT. Here we go, I'm gonna just give that a close. And so we know what our prompt is, right? This is our prompt. And we're gonna take this and whoops, that is some HTML. We're gonna take this, drop it in, and let's just see what it says. I haven't given it any instructions on how I want it to process the outputs, but let's just see. Okay, so right here, this is already like way too much. I can't make a good decision based off of this information because they're saying like, based on the bio, it does not appear to directly fit into your description. Uh, it just gives me way too much information, but basically in this first sentence, it tells me what I need to know. It does not appear to fit directly in, uh, to f directly fit your description of someone building AI powered apps. Okay, that's really good to know, but this is just too much information. So we need to tweak our prompt. Okay. I don't really care about like the entire description of what they're trying to do. I just care about one thing, which is, is this person within my ICP or not? So return only, or I guess respond only with true or false. Now, if I say this again, there we go. We get a single word response, false. Now this we can definitely work with, right? Because it's like, Okay, I can very easily make a decision, just move on. I don't have to read all that other stuff. Like, it's there. Okay, 
So now how do we do this at scale? We can obviously do this one by one, but this is like a really tedious process. So this is my solution. So this is a Twitter, uh, I guess, scraper that I've built. Uh, it's available for the time rich folks who need it. There should be a link in the description if that's something you're interested in. Basically the way it works is there are three tabs. There is the ICP tab, which is um, accounts that I'm looking at. So I'll explain that in a second. There's, and then there are the outputs, the followings and the followers. So what do I mean by ICP? Let me just quickly give you an example. So right here we have uh, Ben Yuan Hui, which is a core maintainer at the QN and Open Devon projects. Um, if you're not familiar, I think those are two foundational models uh, that are open source. So this guy knows what he's talking about. Okay. Now, I don't think he's going to be following a lot of people building like uh, building AI apps. He's probably going to be following uh, like researchers, but that might still be good too. Um, if I look through his following, so people that he follows, indeed, there are some people here that I'm interested in. Jean, Jean for example, is building Gladia IO, which is a speech AI. And we've got Elvis right here building with AI at dare, dare underscore AI. And this is uh, democratizing AI research. Anyways, the whole point is that this person follows people that I'm interested in. So what do I do? Very simple. I just go to this man's profile. I'm going to copy his handle right here, right? Hui Berry. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go in right here. I'm going to paste that there. And I'm going to run this automation. Now, my goal here is to pull all of the people that he follows. So let's go into this automation, uh, also available in TimeRich, and this follow and this scrapes all of his followings and puts them into this table right here. And here he is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and then I'm gonna hit Run. That's going to start the job. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, there it goes. Now remember when I said that we're looking at their description to make a decision, check out this field. Yep, we have their bio as a record. But how do we take their bio and then from here, Airtable, and send it over to something like Anthropic or OpenAI? Like, how do we do that? Got you covered. This is the automation that I've built that does exactly that. The way it works is that we first fetch a list of all the profiles, then we define our ICP, so in this case, here it is, someone who is developing an AI-powered agent slash product slash application slash tool. We send that into Anthropic. In this case, we're using 3.5 Sonnet. And we're basically saying like, okay, here's the ICP, which we've defined here. And then tell me, true or false, if the following text sounds like it would fit my ICP. And we pass in the description, which is this field. So this will programmatically iterate over each one of their bios and give me an update on their profile of whether or not they are my ICP or not, right? So if it makes it to this node, I'm marking them as yes on my ICP. And the way, and I realize I haven't told you, but I have a little checkbox here. Are they my ICP or not? If they are, this will get automatically checked. And then I can run a filter and just look at people that who are definitely my ICP. Okay, so let's give that a run just to show you like how that works. So let's make a new view. We'll call this demo ICP and we'll say, we'll create a filter where, let's see, follow, it should be follows contains um, we very right? Yeah, nailed it. All right, so these are all the records I have on people that Huiberry falls follows. Now, if I go into the make.com page and we go in here and in views, where is views? Right here in views, I'm going to go ahead and select demo ICP and we're going to limit this to, let's say 20 records just to quickly show you. I'm not going to do all 400. That would be pretty expensive. I just want to get the point across. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. All right, there it goes. It's processing, processing, processing. 20 profiles checked, 18 profiles marked. Let's go ahead, filter this by people who were marked as ICP, and then let's do some review. So 20, I'm a little bit suspect of, I'm not gonna lie. That's a lot of people, um, and I don't know that they're all building AI apps, so maybe the prompt needs some work. 
So this is Maziar. He's a principal AI ML and Spark NLP lead. So not really my ICP, but you know, he has he has the word AI in there, so probably pretty close. Masters in Princeton, undergrad. Okay, not really my ICP either. Danilo exploring high dimensional low sample size data. Okay, so not not the most stellar results, but maybe something can be done in the prompt itself. So did I define this properly? Someone who is developing an AI powered agent product application tool. So maybe this is too broad. Maybe instead I need to say AI, AI powered product. And then maybe I have to give it some more information. Maybe I have to say, make sure it's not someone working or make sure it's not someone working in education. I'm particularly looking for entrepreneurs or founders. So if I update my definition and I run it again, there it goes. This time it's looking a little bit better, still a little bit suspect, but it's classified just over 60% as ICP. So we'll see about that. So now if I say they are the ICP, let's look at these people. So we've got 11 people here who might be my ICP. Co-founder and CTO of Hugging Face. So not, ex I mean, he is, but he's like a little bit too, uh, a little bit too high profile for me. Um, but I do, and I actually do follow him. So he, that is actually like the type of person I'm looking for. Ishwara building Inferless, Sequoia India backed with conviction and patience, work and play. So that's interesting. The fastest serverless GPU inference ever made. Okay, I'm interested in that for sure. Iso Kant, co-founder at Poolside AI, have no idea what they do, but why not? Those guys have follow as well. Jason C. Warner, he used to be at the CTO of GitHub. Whoa, he was engineering at Heroku and Canonical. Okay, so this guy is definitely someone I'm interested in, right? You get the gist. For the most part, the, the prompt editing, the, the prompt refinement appeared to do the right thing. It is isolated just entrepreneurial types building something with AI.